Hi everyone, so I am Eric Capo and I'm a postdoc researcher from Huyumyo University uh, and I'm working on the macrometylation uh, in the Baltic Sea with focus on pelagic redox line and oxygen deficient sediment. And um, in this postdoc position, I'm working with many researchers, uh, including from Huyumyo University, uh, Sian Fang and Eric Bjorn, but also from SLU, uh, Linnaeus University, the Swedish Museum of Natural History. Uh, ECM from Barcelona and Stockholm University. So why we are studying macrometylation? It's because uh, methyl mercury is a compound uh, found in the environment and uh, it can bioaccumulate into food web. Here I just show an example in aquatic food web for, from phytoplankton to fish. And um, because of this high uh, bioaccumulation efficiency and because it's also a neurotoxin, it can endanger uh, human health. And what we are studying in uh, this project is how this how mercury is transformed into methyl mercury. This is a process that is uh, mediated by microbes, and I'm studying which microbes are doing this process. So three main goal I will present today about uh, this project is the first one is to describe which uh, macrometylators uh, are present in marine system uh, and I will talk about both water and sediment. The second goal is to understand which parameter regulate uh, the distribution and activity of these microbes in marine system and a uh, third goal that is a bit more methodological is uh, trying to provide a procedure that uh, everyone can use to detect and identify the gene from metagenomes. So we'll show a bit about that. So the first project I will show uh, now, I already presented last year for the EcoChange conference, uh, but it was published since. So the idea was to take available metagenomes um, from the Baltic Sea that were obtained uh, in 2014. Those metagenomes are a um, compilation of DNA sequence from different environmental samples. So within this uh, DNA sequence, we want to see if we can retrieve uh, the ones that correspond to the gene involved in macrometylation. So this gene called ADCAB, they were discovered in 2013, and since then, many studies use them to characterize a macrometylator. In this work, uh, we provide data from different stations. So you can see on this uh, plot, uh, the first column is the station name. This different station follows the salinity gradient in the Baltic Sea uh, from the north to the southwest. And you can see that in the different sample we took, uh, there is different depths that is also related to the uh, oxygen concentration of the environment from nomoxic with oxygen to anoxic with no oxygen. Here you can see uh, the proportion of AGCB genes we found in the different sample uh, and uh, the characterization from which microbes they, they come from. Um, and I also plot here uh, the overall community composition uh, of the bacterial and archaeal community. And what was interesting uh, in this data set is we showed that most of the AGCB genes we found were found in hypoxic and anoxic water from the Baltic Sea. And having a look on the identification, we found mostly uh, delta proteobacteria and spirochet like organism. Also, you can see on the colon name filter and prefilter that for some station we uh, obtain, we use metagen. Meta genomes obtained from uh, different filter size, three microns and 0.2 microns. And we found more AGCB genes uh, on the three micron filters compared to 0.2 micron filters. And we had this hypothesis that uh, these three micron filters correspond to settling particles in the Baltic Sea, and then uh, they may represent a good habitat, a suitable habitat for macrometylator there. Since this work, um, we also uh, collected and analy analyzed a uh, metagenome uh, obtained from specifically two stations in the Baltic Sea, named BY15 and BY32. So we collected water sample in 2019 there. Uh, 
Uh, and what was interesting is we collected a uh, sample for DNA, but also RNA extraction. So that's when you can investigate if the genes are present, but also if they are expressed. Um, analyzing the data, we found uh, this uh, result. So you can see here that we have BY32 station and here BY15 station and from four different depths, there's the amount of HGCB gene and AGCB transcript, transcript being the gene expression. I put also here uh, the state, uh, the oxygen concentration in the water from nomoxic to anoxic. Um, and what we saw is, as we found in the first project, uh, AGCB carrying microbes are mostly abundant in hypoxic and anoxic water layer with the most abundant being delta proteobacteria, but also number of PVC superfilum. So PVC, it's long to me said, vericomicrobia and chlamydia uh, superfilum. And this includes a lot of taxa we call Kiriti matiele. We also saw in terms of AGCB uh, transcript, a shift uh, from uh, mostly predominant delta proteobacteria close to the hypoxic uh, anoxic water transition to a more diverse uh, community uh, with uh, inclusion of chloroflexy, PVC superfilum, and other unidentified microbes. We wanted to understand a bit more how, um, how are the overall community composition in the system, but also their function. So uh, here I just plot the gene expression level of gene involving energy metabolism for the two station and for the six steps in the two station. And it was interesting to see that this data obtained from the meta transcriptome, um, they show that the gene expressed for photosynthesis were mostly expressed in the upper layer, 25 meters in both station. And in deeper layer, we have more uh, metabolism related to uh, anoxic metabolism, such as sulfito reduction that we are actually mostly interested about for our AGCB carrying microbes. Altogether, these data are, com are coupled with uh, mercury and metamercury concentration, but also uh, macrometylation rates. Uh, I will not present this result uh, here today, but uh, we found good correlation between uh, those type of data showing that um, the microbes are there, they do the process, and it's for that we can explain the presence of methylmercury in uh, our water system. Yes, here I highlight the sulfate reduction uh, process. The third project I will show to you today, it's uh, a project that uses the same approach as we use for the water. So, metagenomes and metatranscriptome were collected from Baltic Sea sediment. And what was interesting is this sediment originated from four different uh, locations uh, in the Baltic Sea. The F station here is actually quite close to the BY uh, 15 station that we sample for uh, water. These four different stations uh, had different level of oxygen and uh, sulfide compound. In terms of oxygen, we found oxygenated sediment for the station A with hypoxic to anoxic condition for the three other station, while for the sulfide compound, we found that they were mostly present in the uh, D, E, and F station. We wanted to investigate if we have a difference in terms of HGCB carrying microbes comparing the two type of environment. And uh, this is the result we obtained. So in the first part of the plot, you can see the HGCB gene proportion, and in the second part, the HGCB transcript proportion. You can see also the taxonomic identification of each gene uh, with a legend here, with mostly delta protobacteria from the sulfobacteral, uh, but also other taxa such as Kiriti matelota in brown here, and genes that we were not really able to identify uh, clearly uh, with our phylogenetic analysis, the purple one. Overall, what we found is, as in the water, we found mostly AGCB genes in the sediments that are oxygen deficient condition, 
and we found also the same type of group, Delta Proteo and uh, Kiriti Matilota uh, members. And what was interesting with the uh, metatranscriptome is also we observed a shift of uh, AGCB carrying microbial guild uh, from oxygenated to anoxic sediment. And this was toward a type of uh, microbes we cannot really identify yet. That means they were not really cultivated and they are probably known. But uh, if we take the big picture, we can consider that this uh, shift in community can be a, a result of expansion of a dead zone in the oceanographic zone, such as in the Baltic Sea that suffered a very large expansion of uh, oxygen deficient zone. This uh, phenomena may result in increase of macrometillators that are unknown, and it can have an impact on the macrometillation potential of the uh, water and sediment system. Finally, I will uh, talk a bit more about um, what I call the Meta AG project, where we had two main goals. Um, and why we, uh, I started this project is because if you screen the uh, recent literature about using metagenomes to screen AGCB genes. You can see that all uh, paper use slightly different procedures. And um, with the community, we would like to harmonize that to have a common consensus protocol that everyone can use uh, and can compare the study more easily with others. So this is the first goal of this project. Uh, I'm working with uh, researcher from uh, uh, very different groups. I will describe that later. The second goal of this project is to study the biogeography pattern of these microbes in marine system, collecting a lot of metagenome uh, available. It's, I have more than 800 now that I will screen uh, later this year. So this group, this working group is composed of many uh, researchers, including uh, the main expert in AGCB phylogeny and identification, such as uh, Kathleen Gianfrido, um, Kathleen Bowman, uh, Dwayne Elias, uh, Cindy uh, Gilmore, um, uh, Ben Peterson uh, from the US. We have also colleagues uh, from Swedish, uh, from Sweden, so my uh, working group from Spain, Japan, France, Australia, uh, UK, Netherlands, China, and uh, Canada. I will not present results about that. Today is still a work in progress, but I will just say that I screened already six uh, data set uh, of metagenomes and found uh, macrometillator from different places. Uh, that seems to be slightly different in terms of taxonomy. And so they could um, uh, be related to different environmental conditions. Uh, I will work on that uh, over the next year. So to conclude, um, what we showed uh, about the description of the uh, macro, macro methylating microbe is the metagenomes are powerful to describe those guild. We also sh show from the metatranscriptomic data that it may be useful to get this data to really understand the parameter regulating macro methylation in the environment, and that will include oxygen concentration, but also the presence of other elements such as sulfate that could explain the presence of sulfate reducer uh, compared to other uh, metabolism such as uh, methanogenesis. Last, um, I think this work uh, providing a consensus protocol will be useful uh, for this research and I hope it will help to get a more robust identification of potential microbes. Thank you all for your attention.